Yimto Chamba uko kitu 70s liko inaisha maji mwezi wa 5 lakini sio kuisha kabisa kama wasasa Kutoka mwaka wa 95 maji ilikuwa huko lakini maloli ilikuwa imeingia huko kuchota hii changalawe ndio kiangazi ya nini ya maji ilikuwa Wakati huo tulikuwa tunapanda maharagwe nini hata kila kitu tukitumia hii maji na hii mto Some pupils are missing school because they have become sad scoopers because of the poverty in the area and the parental negligence. We have also uh, others who have engaged in uh, sexual misconduct. Uh, Im Tanga, uwe na nikumbushanga rafiki yangu tulikuwa tunasoma class moja. Mwenye tulikuwa hata tuko kamati moja ya kusuia mchanga. Sasa kuja jumbani tu akapoapoa kidogo kutoka kwenda soko, kumbe wale wenye wanataka kuuza mchanga wamemuona na wameamua kumua. Bali mtrap kwaama wakamteka pale tu kwa jia wakamweka michare mingi sana kwa mwili. This sand trade is like drug trade because you can get a lot of money very quickly. Nairobi was built on a mountain of sand all dug from the river banks in Makueni and Machakos County. Today, a series of multi-billion shilling towers and skyscrapers are rising across the city. And just like decades ago, the trucks hauling tons of sand from Mukambani are still doing it, causing massive environmental damage that will be felt by many generations to come. Joyce Ndunge from Kwandolo village in Yata constituency has experienced the damage firsthand. Nilianza kuchota maji asubuhi saa 12. Na sasa hata saa hizi sijani sijatosha kuchota maji. Kutoka mwaka wa 95 maji ilikuwa huko. Lakini maloli ilikuwa imeingia huko kuchota hii changalawe ndio kiangazi ya nini ya maji ilikuwa. Wakati huo tulikuwa tunapanda maharagwe nini hata kila kitu tukitumia hii maji na hii mto. Wazee wa kijiji machifu hata wanasema abadhari wapate pesa lakini wanainji wana wapotee maji. Joyce Ndunge is hoping for help, but for now she'll have to deal with the problem by herself. The puddle from which she carefully scoops out her water was once a fast flowing river during April's short rains. And this is only Joy's first chore to bring water to her home. Imagine that I shot a mungongo, ni bebe mitungi na mungongo. Na kutoka kwa muto kilomita ya kwenda nyumbani kwangu, ni kilomita tano hivi. As soon as Joyce leaves the paddle, others take her place. For this village, fetching water is a full-time job. From a bird's eye view, it's obvious how devastating the impact of excessive sand harvesting has been in the larger Yata constituency. Depletion of sand from riverbanks is threatening bridges, roads, and most importantly, Ukambani's food security. Naked bedrock is the only evidence that a river once flowed here. Now, the residents of Kwandolo village have to endure perennial water shortages. Kwati ni huku Kwandolo, si tunakuanga na jida mingi sana, ndiyo maana mnaona tunatoa ichangaramu. Ndiyo tujisaidia nae. Juselikali viacha kutusaidia. Ilikuwa zamani ilikuwa na tupia nini. Kama hizi unasikianga zinapitia Red Cross. Sasa waliacha kutusaidia na nanyo waliacha kutusaidia. Tukawana sasa tuanza kutua hii changarao. Kama hii changarao, naitua siku tatu. 
na ikikuja kubeba mwana gari ni sanduku moja na mimi napewa ngeri moja sana najisaidia kulipia watoto wangu shule na wabaie chakula na manguo sasa tukiendelea kutoa itangarao si tuko na shida sana juu naona maji imetuishia hakuna maji huko kwetu tuko na shida mingi sana mpaka ya ngombe mbuzi sasa ziko na shida sana juu ya maji ya kukunywa Just around the corner, but still in Kwandolo village, the roads are bustling and the sand business is booming. But the local Matangini primary school is paying a steep price. The tangu Changarawe yanze kuchukuliwa upande huu. Nimeona mambo mengi mambaya. Jambo la kwanza ni ukosefu wa maji. Tulikuwa tunachota maji hapa muti, hapa karibu. Lakini saa hii ni mpaka dhika na tukifika dhika tunakuta hata maji huko hakuna. Since the sand harvest landed in this area, the school, we have faced a lot of challenges. One, some pupils are missing school because they have become sand scoopers because of the poverty in the area and the parental negligence. We have also uh, others who have engaged in uh, sexual misconduct because when girls are entering the rollies, they are being carried at day and at night they go to fetch water, the sand scoopers are getting the advantage. Environmentalists and climate experts warn that unregulated sand harvesting in the rivers will soon cause a man-made catastrophe, especially considering how erratic climate patterns have been in the lower eastern region. It's really alarming because right now we are talking of uh, some serious and actually really key effects of climate change whereby you can feel even actually right now the direct actually uh, radiation. There's a lot of global warming. A global warming actually is a heating of the heart itself directly. And when the heart is heated directly, if this water, water itself is evaporating, you see, so if now there's another activity trying to also add in, uh, additional, maybe to, to put additional pressure on the existing maybe little amount of water, I will tell you that actually uh, this thing is really alarming. So, why are community members still taking part in the sand harvesting business if it threatens to bring Kwandolo village to its knees? It's all about the money, even if it's only a pittance. <laughs> nyelfu kumi kuna mwenye anakuja anapata saa kuna marute onas saidi na saidi wanapata kitu kidogo vingine zinaguliwa kuna hawa siti kanjo sio naana sasa hiyo pesa ina inagawika hivyo hivyo pakiaje anaweza kuja anabaki tu na kitu kidogo kidogo eh nimaliza hii kazi utapata kama pesa nafiki nikimaliza kaa hii kazi peke yako eh peke yangu utapata 400 koko chao 76 76 9 Seeing the damage done, the community has changed tact. They are now charging a private tax. A lorry proceeds to one of the sand harvesting areas, but it will have to part with at least 500 shillings paid to this woman. Along with the other women in this group, she extorts money from the truck drivers ferrying sand from Kwandolo village. It's illegal, but she does not hesitate to tell us what will happen to the truck if the crew fails to cooperate? Tuseme tu kama mtu mmoja kama dereva amekataa kusimama tunachukua mawe tunamgonga mpaka tunaharibu hiyo ngari vyo vyote vinaharibika ndio alazimike kusimama atupee pesa. Na wamezoea tusha tusha chapa mmoja hapa tukamwaribu na akasimama akatupea pesa kama kawaida yetu. Hizo hizo wonga wana collect huko watu jwangi zinaenda wapi? Tunaambiwa kuna kuna hao ni nino maberia si whatever na hakuna riziti ambao yule anakuja kushota mchanga anaweza kuonyesha ya kwamba nimelipa hii. Hili tujue labda hii wakati mvua ita itamali ita, itakuja ita tujue sasa hiyo wakati wali collect zile wame collect tutaifanyia nini.
Away from the checkpoints and barricades, Joyce Ndunge continues her lonely struggle with poverty and the water shortage. Sasa nimefika kwa nyumba. Nimefika kwa jiko. Hii maji ndio nashaidia kupika chakula, kupatia kuku hata kuosha vyombo, hata pia kukunywa na kufua nguo tayari. Naomba serikali hii biashara ya mchanga ikomeshe kwa sababu wananchi hatuna faida. Kwa sababu nikienda kwa Beria napatiwa moja. Hata hiyo ingine sijui inaenda wapi. Sisi Kenya tuko na sida nyingi sana. Mi nasema hivi. In the second part of the sandstorm, Makueni County is right next to Machakos and the escalating sandstorm is giving Makueni governor Professor Kivutha Kibona many sleepless nights. Uh, sometimes when we arrest people, uh, we arrest lorries, uh, we get very senior people who come to rescue their lorries. And that makes us know that behind this sand harvesting, uh, the high and the mighty are also a part of the process. It's 6 p.m. at dusk in Machakos County. The scorching sun is fading fast. We are heading home to Nairobi County, but dozens of trucks are driving in the opposite direction to Machakos at night, probably to fetch more sun. Machakos County Assembly did pass the sand harvesting bill in 2014 to try and regulate the sand traffic. When it comes to the time of the activity, the law states that sand harvesting is only allowed between 10 a.m and 6 p.m. and after loading the transportation should be done along designated roads but the law seems to exist only on paper. The sand cartels uh, are not used to being regulated because they want a free for all, they want to do what they've been doing in the past, it is very lucrative business uh, so, and again, they have this notion that a county government is, a, is no government at all. It is not the national government. And if sometimes the police are involved, the administration uh, are, uh, are involved, we have some rogue people in the county, sometimes we dismiss them, are involved. So, uh, you find that it's, it's, it's a hard nut to crack and yet we must do all that is possible. Because it's a, this is a major environmental issue, it's a food security issue, it's a water security issue. The locals themselves are divided. A group that is for it and a group that is not for it. There is this care that uh, if we stop the business, uh, there will be some clashes of a kind, and especially that these men, boys who stay in the river, will kind of break into our homes, and that will also be a great uh, a cause of uh, insecurity. And that is why many people who are opposed to the menace will not want to speak openly about it, because they don't want to be identified like people who are an enemy to this menace which to some people has also become like it is a source of livelihood. We also find challenges whereby the, the administration, the people should be trying to assist us, are also involved in the whole business. Because personally I have made several attempts to, to address this issue to the chief, who says that he's going to take action but nothing happens, only to learn that uh, him and the headman and some few people who are well connected with the administration also kind of get some kickbacks from this uh, trade that is actually illegal. In neighboring Makueni County, home to about one million people, sand mining is banned. But it goes on, deeply dividing the community. Because there are some young people who are excited by the uh, 
uh, sand cartels uh, to be able to use even violence and so on so that the sand is harvested. Uh, we have had sand wars, like in the Kaskel region, uh, even before the evolution, people fought and they killed each other. Uh, recently, our uh, vehicles, uh, enforcement vehicles, uh, and even a private one which was hired, I think now three of them were banned uh, by uh, you know, agents of these sand uh, cartels. Harrowing tales of those who have perished in the cutthroat sand harvesting business are told from one village to the next. Wilfred Kingo from Kaseve village knows those who have paid the ultimate price. Uh, Im Changa, uwe na nikumbushanga rafiki yangu tulikuwa tunasoma class moja. Mwenye tulikuwa tatuko kamati moja ya kusuia mchanga. Na alikuwa na kikosi yake kasikeo ya kusuia mchanga hizi choto lazima na hizi sibiwe. Siku moja alitoka kasini Nairobi, yaya alikuwa nafanya kama askari. Sasa kuja jumbani tuwa kapuapua kidogo kutoka kuenda soko. Kumbe wale wenye wanataka kuuza mchanga wamemuona na wameamua kumua. Wali mtrapu wama wakamuteka pali tu kwa jia wakamueka michare mingi sana kwa mwiri. Na wakati ya mekufa, wana mfuata tu wanakata shingo bwana imagine. Na hata ina nikumbushanga, kijana mwingine hapa, kitambo wakati likuwa natembea na kinakayeze. Hea litumwa kama spy aje ya angalie mchanga wanyo anabeba. Kumbi na ya kasahau wana, kwa mtu wakalala, roli limpitia juu. Kamukanyanga bwana na ikatoroka. Kwa hivyo hii, hii mchanga hii, kwa na maneno mingi sana, lakini kiswiliwa, ikikuwa vizuri vile ilivyo za hii, watu wataona the importance of it. Na hiyo maneno mbaya tunaona, atutaona tena. By stripping riverbeds and banks, sand harvesters have lowered water tables, eroded land and altered the course of rivers, putting them out of reach of farmers irrigating their fields. But there is a way to mitigate a dire situation by building sand dams to hold some water back. Now, when we construct this sand dam, as you can see from that side, the back throw of that sand dam registered almost one kilometer, meaning therefore, water that is held within that sand dam and the subsurface flow that was continuous of a period of time after rains, it is contained within that dam. On the lateral side of that sand dam, you find that there are a lot of agricultural activities, both commercial and domestic. Vegetables, some with crude methods of irrigation, and others have come and improvised ways of drip irrigation. Sand dams, uh, I think it's a very nice idea by the county government. It has been working hand in hand with the Water Resource Management Authority. Uh, whereby it has led to the establishment of sand utilization and conservation authority by the county government is, a, is an authority by the count initiated by the county government of Makweni. So these sand dams, it's a drop project maybe I can call it that way because uh, you in pursuit of harvesting sand but at the same time you directly also or you directly getting water in place. And Makueni's farmers have already seen the benefits of the new sand dams, which trap water and allow local farmers to produce food crops year-round. Hana Mutua from Iboleni village is reaping a bumper harvest of Sukuma wiki, thanks to the new water harvesting techniques. Sisi tulikuwa na maji, mtu ulikuwa na maji, tulikuwa maji karibu tupande mboka mingi, na pijana wakakuja wakashota changarawe. Kijana walipa kuchota changarawe, ma, u, muto, muto ulikauka na maji kaanda chini sana. Lakini, from 2015, tulijiunga sisi. Sisi tulijiunga, community tulijiunga, pamoja na serikali. Tukapanga mchanga wetu usiende tena. Sasa, sasa tukona mboka, mboka inatusaidia kula na kulipa school fees na vitu vingine huko nyumbani. Where the community has stopped sand harvesting, agricultural productivity has increased, along with sustainable farming that has encouraged some residents to give up the damaging sand harvesting business. I am the 
ni mimi nilikuwa chairman wa hii hi group ya kuuza mchanga nao niko ni mimi chairman wa kusuia mchanga wa watu wale wanasuia mchanga kuna groups ziko huko tumeungana kutoka mbali tukasema sisi hatutaki habari ya kuuza mchanga hatuku kuwa napata boka kama hizi na ukiangalia hapa hii nyuma hii ni mboga yote ni yangu hapa ni kishamba ni yangu na by this time inapanda mboga na by that time tuku kuwa naweza kupanda kwa sababu tulikuwa tukipanda panda mboga unaona wa, wa jamaa wa kuuza mchanga wengine wanakuja na maupimbe wanakuja wanakusimamia wanakuambia hapa kwa shamba yako tunataka kuiza roli wanaingiza roli na kuna kitu tunaweza kuuliza kwa sababu ukiuliza unaweza kupigwa na by that time tukaona hii kitu si kitu si kitu poa maji natusaidia tena kwa kufua nguo mahitaji ya nyumbani hmm. ngombe sinakunywa watoto wanakunywa ngombe mbuzi kama paka hmm. watu kitu chote kinatumia maji hmm. Officials agree that sand harvesting in Ukambani is doing more harm than good. But as the price of sand goes up, the cartels get even deeper. And intimidation and corruption keep the authorities at bay, exposing local residents to exploitation. There is a sense in which therefore sand is both a curse and a blessing. It is a curse uh, because uh, sand harvesters from without Makueni uh, have decided that they don't have to ask us for permission, they don't even have to follow laws that we have uh, passed. Uh, they come during the night when they are not supposed to, they go into the rivers and pollute them. Uh, so they've just decided that they will take it and uh, 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 they don't think that the county government uh, has the authority to control uh, anything. So. That is the aspect in which the sand is a curse. Critics say it's a curse indeed that will keep the sandstorm blowing, hurting both the environment and local people. Unless urgent action is taken, people like Joyce Ndunge will have to endure the hard times brought about by the sand harvesting in Ukambani. <laughs> Kwa sababu ndiyo ina, inapotelea maji huku tuki, 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 tuki chote. Kwa sababu hii kichangalawe kama ikiwa huko, hakuna maji itakuwa huko. Lakini maroli ya kibeba hakuna maji. Hey, when we are in the